That's very much in class. Um, I just wanted to say a little something about a thing I started doing several years ago that has worked out pretty well for me. When I walk into my classroom now the very first day, I sneak in there before I walk in and when it's time. So maybe uh, before the students ever come in or sometimes at the beginning of the morning. And so I just have one quotation on the board and it says, I don't care how much you know until I know how much you care. And so I want them to stare at that for, you know, eight or nine minutes before I walk in on the first day, before I hand out the syllabus. And so I start out my class saying, what does that sentence even mean to you? And, you know, it's sometimes you got to kind of encourage them a little bit. They don't even know each other. They don't know me. But still, you know, there's a few people who have heard of that sentence before. And I can usually coax a few comments out of them. And then I hand out the syllabus, where caring is the first thing that I basically talk about in the syllabus after I give them, you know, my office hours. And when I start talking about the way this class is structured, a big paragraph on caring is the, is the uh, first thing they read. And so I guess what led to all this, when we were first uh, being told about Complete College Georgia, and reducing DFW rates. And I just started thinking, what could I do to you know, reduce DFW rates and just generally get struggling students to at least you know, get up to a C level and, and do better. And I had gone to some continuing education thing about you know, students are more motivated when the teacher shows they care. And, and you know, I always knew that. And, there would always be some comments on student evaluations. Dr. Ellinger seems like he really cares about the, the subject. He's pretty enthusiastic. But some of them would even say, seems like he cares whether I learn it or not. But I wouldn't get a ton of those. You know, there, there'd be a smattering of those. And so I was thinking, how could I just reorient this whole thing more toward caring? And so basically, on the first day, I'm talking to him about ways they can demonstrate to me that they care. And these are ways that will also improve your grade. I mean, the number one way you show you care is if you care about getting a better grade in the class. So um, I said, come to class and be engaged, at least occasionally. You know? <laughs> like, I don't expect you, some of you aren't talkers, I don't expect you to talk all the time. But if you really want to send a message to me that you don't care, just mess with your phone while class is going on. Yeah, that pretty much says it loud and clear. Plus, it's just rude, like your parents didn't raise you right. And so, um, after I mention that, I'll say, if you really want to get my attention about communicating that you care, come see me during my office hours, because pretty much nobody does. And if you just can't bring yourself to do that, because maybe that's, you'd be shunned by your, by your classmates. Um, even if you talk to me for a minute or two before class or after class, that communicates that you're interested and that you care. And you could send me an email and ask me questions. That certainly communicates that. But even if you don't have questions, I think it's kind of cool when students send me an email when they're going to be absent. Um, it's just kind of a courtesy thing. And, it's, and ask me what they missed in class. Like, I'm going to be missing this class. Uh, what, what am I going to miss? Or after they've missed it, sorry, I missed the class. What, you know, that, that communicates it. Um, bring me a note if you have an excusable absence. Because a lot of people, I think, have excusable absences. They just don't bother with the note. They don't really care enough to get credit for being there that day. Um, I have quizzes. Do all the quiz questions. Because um, a lot of people don't. And the concept <laughs> quizzes, you can take there's not a ton of those questions, about a dozen per chapter, but you can keep taking until you get a perfect score. They'll give you a new question, but a new version of that same question, but you can just keep taking until you get a perfect score, but it takes a little stick to it you know, to, to do that. And again, tons of them don't do that. Um, do the extra credit movie reviews. And that's a big one with me because it's, 
it's pretty generous, eight points. My tests are around 140, 150 points. So, I mean, I think it's significant. A lot of people, I guess, don't think it is because a lot of people don't do it. The majority don't do it. But um, I guess I mention all these things because what I'm telling them on the very first day, and I'm talking about all these things that communicate that um, they care, is that you know, I'm never going to care more about your education than you care about your education. So I'm trying to send you a message that I really care by doing all these extra things, but you need to send me the same message that you care, especially if you're struggling. You know, some of you are bright enough, you'll ace this class without having to do any of those things, and that's fine. I'm talking about the people who are going to struggle in this class for whatever reason. Um, when it comes to the very end and people are right on the borderline, um, I sort of use this caring thing as determining who gets the bump and who doesn't. You know, I'm talking about within one percentage point of the next higher letter grade, although they don't know this, but the people who really demonstrated to me that they care, if they're a little more than one percentage point away, I've been known to give them the bump too. Um, but, um, of all the things that I've, you know, sort of made a point of telling them about, you know, the importance of them showing me that they care, the one thing I've done to show that I care about their learning, which has completely sort of changed my student evaluations, number one, that I didn't even think it was going to have an effect on student evaluations. My motivation to do it was to improve DFW rates when that first came on the scene about four years ago, out of class review sessions. And I know hardly anybody does that, and it seems like it's just too burdensome. But I gotta tell you, it's by far the most energizing teaching that I do. It's by far the most fun teaching. I find myself looking forward to it, because only the people who care show up. And so it's like, number one, it's incredibly ego gratifying to see everyone in, a, everyone in a room taking notes. Oh my God, they're taking notes. I can't get half my students taking notes half the time. Um, and they ask sort of follow-up questions. And here's the amazing part. These things are always scheduled for 75 minutes. And we often go past that. It's like everybody just loses track of time. And I can assure you that doesn't happen in a regular class. Um, my favorite review session time is on Sundays. Sunday afternoon at the library, since I think that's about the only building that's open. And that's where I get the biggest turnouts because there seems to be more people free on Sunday afternoon. My other four review sessions, two of them are gonna be on Monday, Wednesday, two are gonna be on Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, I do a morning time on both Monday and Tuesday, and then an afternoon time both Monday and Tuesday. Sometimes those coincide with my office hour or part of my office hour, but many times they don't. Um, but the Sunday afternoon session, I call it the prayer meeting, <laughs> sort of a joking <laughs> way, you know, you come and pray for a, a, a good grade on the test, but you know what they say, God helps those who help themselves. And so I often get 20 to 30, I've had as many as 40, completely fill up that room 235 in the library, the classroom. Um, and that's often the most energized session. We always start at four, but we've gone as late as six or a little after. And a couple of those times, it was like nobody walked out and I didn't even realize it was that late. That we've really been here two hours. And one time I looked at my, my phone and said, I think AT&T's messed up the clock on my phone because it says like six o'clock and there's no way we've been here two hours. Yeah, we've really been here two hours. So um, I can tell you, some of you may have heard that I just got promoted after 25 years. Yes, I'm an overachiever. Uh, promoted full professor. You know, it only took me like 10 years to make associate, but another 15 to make full. And the reason I was never eligible before is I couldn't get my student evaluations high enough. Our division has very high average, around 4.6, and you pretty much had to be at least 4.5 something to have a chance for a two, and I was consistently 4.3, 4.4. You know, I, I just, 
could never get there. And I had all the excuses in my head. I only teach freshman American government. They're not going to mark me as high as people who have juniors and seniors in some of their classes. Although Mary Nielsen told me there's no statistical difference between the evaluations, the points they give to upper level classes and lower level classes, which surprised me. So she said, you really can't use that one as an excuse. <laughs> and so the bottom line was this. I never had nearly as many students tell me that I try harder in this class because the professor seems like he really cares about whether I'll learn it. And the number one thing they talk about is I just can't believe he gives five different out-of-class review sessions. That he cared enough to even come up here five times when he doesn't have to. Of course, it's easier for me other than five minutes away. So that's, yeah. that's not a logistical problem for me. But, you know, the, the four that I give on, I usually test on Wednesday and Thursday. So the four that I give on Monday and Tuesday, they're either like often an hour or two before my office hours start, the morning one, the afternoon one might be just after my office hours end. But a lot of times it's during a morning office hour or during an afternoon office hour. And so there's really not even ex any extra time commitment to do that. So if you've never really thought about an out of class review session, uh, there's no better way to demonstrate that you care about their learning if you're willing to sort of go out of your way to do that. And you might be gratified to see how many people will show up. Although I will tell you, um, because I usually teach at 9.25, my morning ones are generally at 8. And yeah, I do well to get five people there a lot of times. But still, they had the opportunity. The, one, the ones that are usually at 3 o'clock in the afternoon get a better turnout. But um, anyway, it's, I would just, I think the main reason I signed up to do this was to make a pitch for out of class review sessions. If you never really contemplated doing that. And what will surprise you, aside from getting a boost to student evaluations, which I it didn't dawn on me would make enough of a difference, but it did. So I wouldn't have gotten promoted without this. I'm quite certain of that. Um, uh, what surprised me is that it's fun for me, energizing for me. Um, and I, I wish I could get that kind of energy in a regular classroom. But when you only have the people show up who really, really want to learn it, that's the most energizing thing. I can't seem to get that in my regular classroom. But these review sessions, you know, you can get that. It's pretty cool. So anyway, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for